Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica, and today we are going to be talking about our kettlebell around the world. The kettlebell around the world has several different names because everybody in the world who does kettlebells calls things different names, like Ariel, everything's got a name. We call this one around the world. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up the kettlebell in front of our body and we're gonna go around our body in a circle. Pointing two feet straight ahead, there are two versions of this exercise. The one we do in the beginning is with our feet all the way together. So that's the one I'm gonna demonstrate first. And then we will have our feet further apart and we will demonstrate that second version. Feet all the way together, pass the kettlebell around your body. Changing directions. From the back. Changing directions. So this looks like a really simple exercise and it is a very simple exercise. It is also something that you should definitely be doing. We use this very often in warm-ups. We have our feet all the way together. If you have flat feet or anything weird is happening, this is one of the first exercises that we teach. We don't let people turn out because we don't want their feet and their knees to collapse in. We want to point the feet straight ahead, physically making contact with the instep of our foot and our big toes squeezing them so that they are lined straight up. As the weight is going around our body, if the weight is on this side of my body, these abs fire. If the weight is in the front of my body, the muscles in my back fire. The weight is on this side, these muscles fire. When the weight is behind us, the front muscles fire. We are making our muscles of our core fire around in a circle. Normally, I like to use 20 reps each direction as part of a warm up. You can also, if you want, you're doing it in a group setting and you need to keep everybody together, you do it four times. You set a minute, one direction, a minute, the other direction. However many they get is however many they get. Something that people don't realize when they begin training is that their hands don't work all that well. People are not used to reaching out and grabbing things, especially heavy objects, because most people live in cities, they're not farm people, they didn't grow up building houses or whatever. Some people did, and this is not a problem. Doesn't matter, it's still a good warm up. Right now I'm using a 16K, but crank this up to a 70 pound kettlebell, this stops being a warm up, it starts being part of the workout itself. Gripping over and over and over is something that people are not used to doing. Get your hand all the way around the bell and use your thumbs. Don't try and do that monkey thing where you do it without thumbs. Terrible idea. Same thing happens when people try to do it in the back. They'll get back here and they won't get their second hand on the bell and they'll bring their hand around and the kettlebell will go flying away. All bad. The only goal on this is to not drop it. Don't drop it on yourself. Don't drop it on anybody else. Get rid of all the small dogs and cats and children in the area. Very important. Do not drop it because when the kettlebell hits the ground, it will slide. And it's basically a wrecking ball. It's a, that's a 36 pound iron wrecking ball going through an area. But this leads us into doing hand transitions. This is the absolute most basic move that you're gonna learn in kettlebell juggling later on. So in the interest of building up to more complex things, figure out how to just hold on to the weight. Let's demonstrate this now. Instead of having our feet all the way together, we're gonna have our feet shoulder width apart because that is the normal athletic stance that we want to achieve. And once again, we are gonna point our feet straight ahead. If we have our feet turned out and one foot is turned out more than the other one is, which is most people in the world because most people have a dominant leg and that leg tends to turn out more from things like throwing patterns, then that can put strain on our knees over time. We don't want that. I have three knee surgeries, very particular about foot position because I'm very particular about knee position. As this weight gets heavier, you're going to see using the hips and pushing out of the ground from side to side. As long as the heels are down and the feet are pointing straight ahead and you don't drop it, you're doing it generally correct. As we go heavier in weight, this is a 40, you're gonna see more and more leg movement. This is what we want. This is not just an arm exercise. This is an ab exercise and a hip exercise. Driving up from each side to help your arms move the weight around your body. So 
So you can use this as a warm up for almost anything because making your core fire while standing all the way up is always good. We prefer our core to fire better standing than lying down. This is why most people have back problems. You'll see them do tons of sit-ups, but they have back problems. And it's very simple. They're training their abs to work lying on the ground instead of trying to train their abs to work while they're standing up. Your abs need to work in conjunction with your hips and with your legs to create and transfer force from your feet, through your core, to your hands. If you do 20 one way, 20 the other way, you've already fired your core 40 times. If you do two sets of that, you've fired all the muscles 80 times. You combine that usually with halos, and you do halos five one way, five the other way for a total of 10. Combine it with the 40 reps, you do 50, you do two rounds. You fired all the muscles in your body 100 times in the first three minutes of a workout. Fire more muscles, let them turn on. That's the point of the warm up.